In this video, I'd like to convert a decimal number into a floating point number. This example is going to be a number that is uh, starts off greater than one, or the number I'm representing is greater than one. So I'm going to take the uh, start off with the whole number part. In this case, the number I chose was 23795.1468. Uh, I'm going to take the whole number part. I'll do some copying and pasting. I'm in calculator, programmer mode, decimal, control V, paste it in there. And then I'm going to move over to the binary. And I'm going to copy. I'm not going to copy the leading zero. For the whole number part, I'm not interested in the leading zero. And so I'm just going to paste that over here as part of my show my work as one of my steps. And then that there's sort of a, what they call digit grouping on this calculator. So there's one, two, three, four groups of four, which is 16, but I'm not using that leading zero. So this was 15. So it took 15 bits to represent the, the whole number part. Okay. And in the floating point numbers, I'm going to, in the, in the end, when we're really finally done, we're going to store uh, a 23 bits for what's called the mantissa. Um, but I'm going to act until the very end like there are 24. So if I've used up, if I have all together 24 and I've used up 15, then that gives me back nine bits to use for my fraction. So now I take my calculator, I'm going to move over to scientific mode, and I'm going to take my the fraction I'm interested in, 0.1468, and then I'm going to multiply it by two raised to that number of bits I just determined, which was nine, and I get 75.161.1616, and um, some people, uh, uh, right now this number, the, the fractional part of this number is less than a half, so it doesn't matter. But I usually, uh, in either case, truncate, but some people will round. But take, I truncate, so I'm just going to take the whole number part and go over to programmer mode and decimal again, paste it in. And now I need the binary representation of what I just got. And I need to also still keep track of how many bits. So I said I wanted nine. And this right now, including a leading zero, only gave me eight. And so then I need a zero in the front. So I need it to be nine. And I, if, I, it, if I don't get nine, then I make it nine by putting, in this case, leading zeros. And this makes sense because in after the dot in binary, you have the sort of negative powers of two. So the first thing after the dot is the halves place, the one over two to the minus one, the halves place. And the fraction I'm representing is less than a half, so I expect a zero in the halves place. The next position after the dot in a binary fraction would be the one over two to the two, or one over two, two to the minus two, or one over two to the two, or one fourth. And uh, this fraction is less than a fourth. So I use 0.25. So I expect uh, zero in that place. But it is more than an eighth, which is the next spot. So I expect this third digit being a one. That makes sense. OK. So now at this stage, I put my two pieces together. What I would have is my whole number and then dot and then my fraction. OK, different font sizes. OK, we can deal with it. Um, now what I want to do is, you know, floating point is a sort of analogy to scientific notation. In scientific notation, you have a non-zero number, six, say, some non anything but zero, dot, and then some other digits, and then times the power of 10. But you move the, the decimal place until you get one digit and then the dot. So that's what we're going to do in floating point as well. And so this, I need this dot to move to the, uh, not to the all the way to the front, but after this initial one. And we know that it was, that digit was 15 places. So we, it has to move 
14 places. So I'm going to take this again, just a, showing a bunch of work along the way. And I want to move the dot here, get rid of the dot there. But then to compensate that, the number out front has gotten smaller. I compensate by multiplying by 2 to the 14. So that those two are the same number. Um, but this one has is in the form uh, that I use for floating points, my binary uh, analog to a scientific notation. So I shifted it 14 times. So it's just forcing me to show my work. And so I shifted 14 times. And then what they do in floating point numbers is take this number of shifts. This was a positive shift. So I was making a the number out front was large and I was making it smaller. So I, I, I'm going to call that a, a positive shift. If the number had been uh, less than one, I would have to shift in the opposite direction. Um, and what I do to, because I can have either positive or negative shifts, uh, the way floating point deals with that is to what they call bias. And the bias in uh, this, this uh, floating point representation that uses uh, altogether 32 bits, um, the bias is 127. So I'm going to add 14 and 127. And I need the binary representation anyway. So I'm going to say 127 plus 14 gives me 141 and then I need that in binary that's that'll be what we call the exponent so that was 141 and that in binary is here so now we put our pieces together so overall the number that I'm representing was positive so the sine bit is a zero the exponent is that thing I got from biasing my number of shifts. So shifts, so that was 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And then the mantissa, this thing after I did my shifting, is related to the mantissa. But I am only going to keep 23, not... Uh, not 24, and this first thing is, we said our rule was that it was a digit that is not zero, and in binary, the only digit that's not zero is one, so it's always a one, so they decided I'm not going to store that, and so then I just store everything else. So in this case, zero, one, one, there were three ones, and then two zeros, and then four ones, one, two, three, four, and then a zero, and two ones, and then two zeros, and a one, and two more zeros, and then a one and a zero, and five. No, I miscounted. Zero, one, two, three, I got that. Two zeros, one, two, then four, one, two, three, four. This was two zeros. This was two zeros, that's where I made my mistake, and a one, and two ones, two zeros, and then a one and two zeros, and then a one, a zero, and two ones. I think I got it right now. Okay. So I'm not storing that original one that was out before the dot. I'm storing everything after the dot. Zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, 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 one. Zero zero one one zero zero one zero zero one zero one one. Okay, I think I've got it. So that would be my uh, floating point representation. And now I'm going to try to uh, put that into a calculator here on the internet. Um, hschmidt.net, h-schmidt.net, and uh, Let's try this. Uh, the sign bit was zero, so don't uh, check. Uh, here, check, then four, three don't checks, and then check and check, skip and check, okay. And then in the mantis, uh, zero, then one, two, 
three, then two zeros, and one, two, three, four ones, then two zeros, and two ones, and then two zeros, and a one, and two. Four ones, two zeros. Sorry, that was a one. That was a zero. Two zeros and a one. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, one. Okay, there we go. So I've reduplicated what I just had over in the calculator to do a check. Uh, my number was 23795.146. And so it's uh, pretty close over here uh, to what I wanted to represent. And so I, it seems a reasonable check that I seem to have uh, done it correctly, done what I wanted to do. So that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, take a decimal to a floating point representation, also performing a check. Uh, thanks for your attention.